What you doing right now, bruh? Can you see? Can you see? I'm, I'm, I'm squeezing. I'm sure squeezing. Hey, good afternoon, dudes and dudas. Uh, this is Dude Dylanus here. I am very sorry that this video sort of came out late a little bit because yesterday I actually need to get out of my my head a little bit. So I went to SF with two friends. And you know, I don't know if it's considered a date or not. And uh, and and guys, do do not ever go on a date with a pair of sisters. That doesn't really work, okay? It surely doesn't work. And and guess what? As as an Asian guy who who basically day trade all day and, and sit there do stock researches and do number crunching and making algorithms, maybe dating is not something that we should be considered doing. Really, it only sort of destroys your mental a little bit but guys um anyways uh yesterday was a great day we just reached 100 subs and this prelude or this introduction to this video is mainly to thank thank you so much for you guys support and you know your support is gonna pay out because in this video i'm gonna sort of debunk in quotation mark of what other youtubers and tubers are talking about like reverse stock reverse stock split and um, they're like, oh my god, it's bad. Oh my god, people are panicking. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like, dude, sometimes if you don't know what you're talking about, just fucking shut up. Like, let the people who actually do the numbers do the thing. And also, on um, in here, I'm gonna say this in advance because I don't want to interrupt myself by putting disclaimers in. I might or might not. So disclaimer first, we are not financial advisors. We do not give financial advices. And yeah. Have fun uh, with the video, and there's gonna be a lot of information, and I think you guys are gonna love it. And my voice today is quite calm, isn't it? And I'm back, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, dudes and dudas, children of all age, and uh, this video is mainly about Torch, you know, the road ahead, what is going on, you know, by due diligence, we're the chosen ones, okay? And for you, for all of you pussies out there, stop fucking panicking. Like, I'm so sick of people who are like, Oh my god, shits are going down, the apocalypse is coming, Y2K, holy shit, oh my god, fucking shit, oh fuck. And then just like, start, start watching other YouTubers' video. They're like, we don't really know what is going on, but most likely, uh, the split is bad, reverse split is so bad. But guys, like, how long have you been trading? Huh? Like, what are the normal situations for stock splits? like reverse splits, right? You usually see them in ETFs. Why? Because their price is, is dropping too low that they probably get delisted. And those DJs fucking uh, do reverse splits because they won't jack up their price, so then they have a bigger room to short the ETFs. Because as you know, the S&P 500 has been rising for the past eight years. But we're different. This is a merger. And if you look back into the previous, like, you know, a thousand or 200, 500 reverse stock splits. There's only a tiny little bit of them are from reverse mergers, mergers from things where like a, st a stock just like, they don't really randomly do a reverse split, okay? A lot of them, a lot of them are doing it because for financial reasons, and a lot of them are, are for number of reasonings. And then I'm gonna explain all of those in this video. And hopefully everything get covered. Well, all we have to do is just sit tight and, you know, grab some popcorn and listen. Okay, there's going to be some number shit that you guys won't like because you're not as Asian as I am. And only I can say that because I'm Asian, right? Uh-huh, I got you. So overview, what are we are going to cover today? Well, we, we're going to cover reverse split. As you know, I talked already two minutes probably about it. Uh, ranting about like why other people are the R word, right? And then I know you guys want this the most because a lot of you are commenting like, guys, stop panicking, okay? You're on the due diligence channel. We're making a Discord. We're making a Patreon. Just wait for it, okay? Now we're growing. We're growing pretty fast compared to other channels. And you know what that means? That means a lot of you are actually smart because you pick our channel. And do not pat the, the first rule of subs on this channel is if you want to keep trading, you want to keep investing, you want to keep making money first rule you have to listen to us is one important if you don't get anything out of this video it's one do not fucking panic panic selling is absolutely shit and retarded 
I'm so sorry I used that word, okay? I'm, I'm so sorry I shouldn't. Probably should be been out or whatever. But that's really bad. That's just stupid. Outright stupid, okay? And the number two thing we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about squeeze, short covering details. Yeah, 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 you know who you are. You know who you are, yeah? The ones who are commenting down below and talking about, you know, oh my God, is it going to be a covering? The short answer is yes, but the longer answer is yes, it depends and probably, but it depends on their brokerage deals. Anyways, we're going to cover that later anyways. And uh, the third part is going to be previewing for the next video on MMAT, aka formerly known as Torch. And don't really want to make this video too long because only 50% of you actually stay at the end. And guess what? At least 80% of the 50% probably will capitalize on my infos and probably will make money, right? And also, guess what? Compared to other YouTubers, I actually know what I'm talking about. So yeah, it's your choice. You know, you have the power to listen, to absorb all these informations and act on it. Because guess what? We are not financial advisors. We do not give financial advices. And everything we say on this channel is for entertainment purposes only and for shits and giggles. Let's get into it. See, this is the explosive news on Friday. So on June 25th, 2021, Torchlight said, you know, business combination is complete. Everything is effective as of Monday. So now Monday, Torchlight is going to become Meta Materials, MMAT. In this video, I'm not going to talk about why I like MMAT. Um, that's simple. They have shit tons of patents that are really have a lot of mil mil military applications. And there's some a lot of futuristic shit that maybe Elon's gonna love and maybe you know Jack Bezos gonna love and have huge potentials, okay? But what bothers us is the the eight the reverse split that announced on that day, one to two, yeah. And then the effect after a reverse split, and then for those of you who are holding meta, um your quote unquote invisible potential gain actually goes down because if you hold one share of meta before on as in a Monday. You won't get 3.6 shares anymore, you will get 1.8 shares. But I will cover all of this on in the next couple of slides. And again, I have to nail it to your head. Do not panic. And for those of you who already panic and panic sells at the end of Friday night's aftermarket, sucks for you. So reverse stocks what one to two. What does that mean? Generally, it doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean anything. Literally. Right, 100 shares turn into 50 shares, but the total value stays the same. What does it mean? So for Torch, our price goes from $5 to $10, but total value is before the stock split, you have $5 per share for 100 shares, total value, 500, no? Right? And then after split, $10 per share, 50 share, how much is that still? 500, no? Still 500. Hey guys, and uh, you know, I love the pink stuff, you know? So, um, you know, it's still 500. And what happens after a merger? Well, after the merger, one torch gives you one, one share of meta material. So, for us torch holders, nothing really changes on your account. Your total value still stays the same, everything's the same. What about the meta holders? Previous meta holders have one share of meta, and now I convert into 1.8 shares of MMAT. Okay, and I think we need to exit this mode and just go to my little sheet here. Okay, so if you go into this little sheet here, you will see you have torch. Two, if you hypothetically, if you have two hundred shares of torch pre-split, now after split, it becomes a hundred share post-split. No, yes, I'm just repeating myself right now. Okay, I'm trying to explain it as simple as possible, as plainly as possible. And before split, it's five dollar per share. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, apologize for that because I used to, you know, run TA courses for universities and I sort of teach them about, you know, financial stuff. So I expect people to really raise their hands and answer. But guess what? For those of you who have been through college, you know, nobody fucking answers. So uh, I'm just going to say it. Um, and post split, that's $10 per share. No? Yes. So 200 times 5 before split, your total value is $1,000. Yes, yes. No problem here. Post split, ten dollar per share, a hundred shares. That's a thousand dollars. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. Okay. So if you have two hundred shares of Torch on Friday, on Monday 
you will have 100 shares of MMAT, and your total value will stay the same as $1,000. Nothing changes. And for those of you who are holding meta materials on Friday, you have, let's say you have 100 shares pre split, and because the split doesn't affect meta materials, it only affects tour sh shareholders. That's why you still have 100 shares by the end of market close, right? And then when market closes, the information comes out. It says merger closes. So pre merger, it's 13.86 per share. I mean, I've already done the Canadian, the beaver dollar to eagle dollars, you know? The Canadian dollars to US dollars conversion, I've already done it. Um, so that's about 13.86 per share. So what about post merger? Post merger, your per share price actually drops to $10 per share. Do not panic. Do not panic because your 100 pre merger share will get into 180 ish because about 187 187.6 or something like that and i'm too lazy to do the to do decimals because i do every math in my head anyways and decimals fuck me up so you have 180 shares of post murder meta material mma t-shirts now so you you will end up with 180 shares of mma t on monday your total value actually changes right so 13.86 times 100 shares equals a thousand three hundred eighty six dollars it converted now into 10 post merger per share price, right? 10 and times 180 right here, it gives you a thousand and eight hundred dollars in total. So basically, if all your portfolios is meta materials, you're, you'll have an instant gain of four hundred and fourteen dollars per 100 shares. And a lot of you are like on on, yeah, on Yahoo Finance. I actually never read comments on Yahoo Finance, but this, but this, I think today and last night and on Friday, uh, other dudes on the channel are like, you should go watch it. Or like how people panic, right? I was like, yeah, I love watching people panic. I just went on a platform and everybody's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, she's going down, she's going down. And then all these like torch holders are like, oh my god, where's our upside, guys? Where's our upside? They're crying. And then Madam material holders like, oh my god, it's a bad deal. It's actually a good deal for you guys. You have the instant game of $414 per 100 shares. But, but, that is actually not really a gain per se. Let me explain it, okay? And and actually, torch holders and meta material holders, you actually have like, both of us have equal opportunities here. Nobody is getting advantage of anyone. Nobody's getting the short or longer end of the st stick. Let me explain. So how does it really work? Right, this is where the math part comes in okay if you don't like it skip it and just skip to the end and maybe for some price prediction or maybe i'll do price prediction for, for the next video you never know this is this is more like a you know anti-panic mess buster video about the split so meta material used to be 13.89 dollars right so in canadian dollars it's about 17.12 so i've already converted you know i did you guys a favor i've already con converted the beaver dollars into eagle dollars you know you know, Canada beavers, no? Hockey dollars? And torch is $9.9, okay? So what is the difference? The difference is about $4, no? Does this look, you know, familiar? Looks like Cassie from next door? You know, looks looks like, you know, looks like, uh, you know, someone, you know? Yeah, it looks super familiar. Because if we were doing it on a 100 shipper basis, you'll have the gain, the gain, the meta material holder gain is 4.14. That means, for those who are holding my materials, your true gain technically or psychologically is only 14 cents per share. No? So the 14 cents per share is the, the merger premium ba basis. Yeah? You see? You see? All the brains are here. All the brains are here, you see? So all of us have like equal deals here, okay? So essentially, the fair value of Torch on Friday and the fair value of the of meta materials on Friday stay the same. And when they merges, their combined fa fair value actually did not change at all. So in a financial term, the actual fair value of the merged company actually is undervalued. No? <laughs> right? Because think about it. Even, let's just say Torch doesn't doesn't have any like asset value, which in this case they don't, right? Because they're an oil, you know, exploitation company and then they hold the asset and they're gonna sell all of them and give it special dividends to us. Right? 
But what Meta Material is really looking for is they want Torch's listing on NASDAQ. So that means Torch have intrinsic value, you know? And how much is that intrinsic value? We don't really know yet, right? But I can find out if I really want to. But because I'm too lazy, I don't really want to find that out. So Meta Material was trading on 13.89 on Friday as it's, you know, like alone, as a sole a so proprietary, a solely you know, independent company, not merged yet. It's about 14 bucks, right? That's 14 bucks, fair value, no? And then when it merges with Torch with an intrinsic value of some unknown value, does the value supposed to increase? Of course it's supposed to increase, right? Because one, one plus one equals to two. That's simple math, no? So when it becomes to two, there's always going to be a value increase. But on Monday morning, the price is going to decrease to $9.9. And because we already counted it to price conversion premium, that's why the $9.9 actually is, is like not really the, like the true value. So the invisible true value of my materials is traded around $13.9. Okay? And like all math is already accounted for. So right now, it's undervalued in terms of sh uh, fair value market price compared to the, the the price on Friday. Like, okay, so if you don't understand all of that, right, that just means you have a potential upside of $4, okay? Like psychologically speaking, and for a lot of people are trading out girls because, you know, without going into all these like financial and mathematics, uh, that's all you have to know. That's your potential upside, okay? I mean, again, we're not financial advisors. We do not give financial advices. And we, um, and we also have potential risks on, on this deal too. Um, but right now, I don't really want to go into it because all of you are here are just for, you know, confirmation bias. And I'm giving you like the facts here, okay? The mathematical and then the, the informational fact here. And you, you should take this information um, and then invest or do whatever you want at your own, you know, prevail or at your own cost or as your own benefit or whatever that is. Okay. So you have a potential, you already have a potential upside of, of around $4. Like, and then, but then, but then like, you know, go back to the question, right? For all of you who are just looking at the, the, the face value of all these, this, this reverse stock split and, and all these um, torch holders are like, you know, before the merger, uh, uh, before the split uh, with the merger deal, I could have one share become two share. And I will have like, you know, one share for free. So, but daddy, where's the sugar for torch holders? Guys, let's stay tuned, okay? Be patient, do not panic. Next slide, gonna explain it all. So imagine torch and MMAT are like friends with benefit, okay? And, and I know all of you are probably over 18 or probably over 21 because you're investing your money, no? Because I assume teenagers cannot invest money. So I can use friends with benefit, right? But also, like right now in, in corporate America, who doesn't know this word? Okay, I mean we're not really monetizing the videos anyways, and hopefully YouTube don't uh, don't, don't ban us because it's not really like anything like taboo to say anyways, right? Plus we don't have a thousand subs yet, so I can say these unfiltered shit, right? So then basically they're friends with benefits, like everybody has their needs and desire, and they fulfill each other. Okay, so for torch holders. What you're looking at, you're looking at the short squeeze. You're looking at the squeeze upside, okay? So how much is the squeeze and when is the squeeze? How is the squeeze gonna happen and then what, right? I'm gonna explain it a little bit in a Word document, okay? And then you will see a price action upside, which we already covered, right? On uh, that $4 price action upside, which is essentially the psychological upside and the upside from previous meta holders. Because guys, let me ask you a very interesting question. What is the whole point of listing a company on NASDAQ? You want A, more liquidity, and B, you want a potential, like, uh, a financing round later in, in, in the day, right? And my hypothesis is Meta Materials is going to issue more shares for trying to do a at the market, you know, underwriter financing deal at around $20 per share. Okay. And don't quote me on that because, hey, we're not financial advisors. We do not get financial advisors. And a third one is actually really interesting and important is whenever there's a reverse stock split or, or, or just stock split in general, the auction flow is going to be fucked up and you can actually make profit out of it. Um, and there's going to be inflows and outflows from it, but I don't really want to cover it because a lot of you are just playing the hold and sell and hold long-term hold game or 
for me, it's more like a day trading game. I mean, I do trade options, but because our first option tutorial videos haven't been out yet, so I don't really want to go covering it. I don't really want to cover it because I'm not, I'm no pussy like the shorts will have to cover on Monday. See, the pun is there. I mean, unless we got a lot of shits and comments and likes, then I probably will just make a short, like, five or six minute video about explaining it. Like, what does it really mean? Like, you have a option flow upside. But in short, like, all of you who are trading options, your, 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 your strike price is probably going to increase and your loss size is going to decrease by half. Okay, so maybe next video. But for right now, let's just get into the Word document real quick. So where comes the upside? Okay, brother, the, the reverse stock split actually worked in our favor, okay? At least for those of us who are holding it, not really looking for the upside for the special stock dividend. So let me explain the spec, uh, why is we're, we're like, you know, why the reverse stock split actually work in our favor at the potential cost of uh, special dividend holders. Why? Here's the reason. So online or the C, what the CEO was trying to say the other day is like, you know, the stock dividends around like $1 to $20. And if you watch my previous video, $20 is out of the question right now. It probably is impossible, right? Because your total asset, appraisal of the assets is around like $70 million, $70 million of their oil asset, right? So back then they have $150 million oil asset. And then that will probably give, will give you 50 cents per share. Special dividend. No? Yes? Math? Quick? No? Yeah, if, if, you, if you don't process that, just rewind and rewatch that part, okay? So right now, there's, so let's just say they sell it at 70 million. Right now, we have 75 million shares, right? What does it mean? That means we almost reach our target of $1 per share, no? Yeah, $1 per share per, the, 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 per dividend, no? Yeah, exactly. So basically, what this what it's doing is it essentially doesn't really do anything financially speaking, but psychologically speaking, for all of us who are holding it from the 22nd to the 24th, our price reduction went from 0.5, went from $1 per share per dividend to 0.5 per share per share per dividend. Okay. And if you have any questions, comment down below. Like, does it make sense? Um, all right. Maybe I should probably stream this, but I don't know like how many people are gonna watching, watch in, and I want people to ask live questions so I can answer them. You know, I, I can answer the chat, uh, and also I, I like a challenge because whenever you do a live, you know, stream and stuff, people are gonna ask like weird questions, and you know, it's sort of like on the spot and it tests my knowledge. And um, I I love when people ask me hard questions because I can think on my head, think on my feet, think with all the information I already have. Because I've 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 done a lot of research on this. All right, so, and, and also like remember the, the at the market offering to underwriters and, and if you are underwriters, right? If you're the underwriters, you give like, you have a call, you have a like, you have a cost, okay? You have a like, cost of goods sold for offering the at the market, you know, stock offering to um, Torch, right? On the surface, Torch, right now, MMAT, what it did is, they traded 250 million for around mm, around like 50 million shares of their stock. And those 50 million shares of stock, they either need to make it disappear or make it disappear or make it disappear. So then their 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 current shareholders share doesn't get diluted. Okay. So what does reverse stock split? Where where does the reverse split actually do? They just make the 50 million share evaporated. So they literally, in a financial term, they sort of decrease the risk for underwriters because they have less shares to worry about on um, in a long run. Okay, if you don't if, if you don't get that part, also comment down below. So they have less shares to mm, let's explain it like that this way, okay? So but, Underwriters are not, not not shorts, right? So let's just say they're shorts. So for the shorts, they, they used to be, they before the stock split, they need to cover us, uh, 100 million shares, okay? But now they only need to cover 50 million shares, okay? But, and for underwriters, their cost for holding more shares is more than the cost for holding less shares. Make sense? 
So right now, their general cost for holding the shares decreased. So it means their quantity risk decreased. And then after stock split, you know, their, their general risk will decrease by a little bit. But in reality, their, their price before the split for all for 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 like taking on the risk of holding that 50 million shares and giving them like 250 200 million 250 million dollars is their cost of the, this security th their financial instrument is about 5.1 dollars so right now their cost is around 10.2 dollars right after split post split and you know we're not those channels where we hate institutional investors they can also be be our friends, right? We always talk about oh the the hedgies and the shorties are bad, but what is so great about the hedgies and the shorties and the underwriters, all these institutional investors? They don't want to lose money, they don't. So if their if their cost per share right now is ten point two, that means the potential upside for the stock is over ten point two, right? And then for those institutional investors. Like on Monday, a lot of people is probably going to panic sell, right? I mean, if, well, unless we see a lot of people cover on Monday, like pre-market, then you will see a bang, a sharp like increase of stock uh, stock prices. But for the shorts, they really want to like negotiate a deal with their you know broker and saying either I want to roll over my shorts to the new merged company, which is not advised. For most most time when, when merger closes, there's gonna be a, an upside anyways. And for a lot of you who just tuned in, if a lot of you like looked up a medio and, and agree with me, is because a lot of you guys are actually looking for the post merger upside for meta materials, because we all believe in the product, right? The product they're selling. But for those of you speculators, like when you guys see the short squeeze going on like pre-market, you probably will just hold on to it. And what will happen is is what because they already covered and lose all those money what they're going to do is they're going to come in like post market not post market post pre market and they're probably going to start shorting the stock because they want to they want to sort of hatch their losses a little bit and they hope you panic sell at that point and there's going to be like the ladder position going down or whatever but a lot of a lot of smart people or like other institutional investors who don't have the ability to trade on the OTC market before they will come in and then just buy the dip right So, and also like if we just make 50 million shares disappear, that means what? The 75 million share minus the 50 million shares, you have 25 million shares still didn't disappear, right? So technically the 25 million shares holds the value of the total of the 75 million shares, right? Does it, does it make sense? Or do I need to explain it another way? So which means if you do the math correctly, then you will have an instant 16% upside out of the bat on Monday morning. If the stock price, you know, start around like $9.9 or my, like, like there's no shenanigans happening. Nobody covers, let's just say everything goes as usual, but the shorts, let's just say like, they at the mercy of their margin calls and they're like, okay, you can, you can, the, the, the old merger, the old merger date is the 20th, right? This is one of the possibilities is the 30th. So like, I, I want you to cover before the 30th. They can be do that, or they can negotiate a deal for paying what for their prime mortgages or with their brokers, like paying a fee for you know not covering for a little bit because they're looking for you guys to panic sell. But at this point, there's a 16% upside out of the bat, and then you know, uh, the nine you can do the math from the 9.9, .9, I can do the math from like the ten dollar mark, which I think is probably going to open to uh tomorrow morning, right? And if there's shenanigans going on, they're probably gonna do you're probably gonna see a gap cup, anyways. And right now, I'm not really in a mood of making a true price prediction because I'm lazy. Um, so yeah. So that already gave you a 16% upside. And what else? Like, what else you need to think about? Like short squeeze, covering. Like, what the fuck is going on, right? Well, here's the thing, right? So as I said before, you have to cover, okay? When there's a termination of a ticker, like this, okay? Now become M A A T. A new book opened. So if you want to short this, if you want to short this merge company, you have to place your shorts in a new book. So your old book has to cover. You have to go. It has to go. Okay. The date is either by. So if legally speaking, you have to cover before like this thing actually go on market. So this thing go on market tomorrow morning at like 12, right? 12 morning at 12.01.
technically they have to cover, okay? But, but they might negotiate a deal, like maybe cover later because, you know, cash flow margin calls going on, whatever, 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 right? Because nothing is really absolute, as you know, because it's America, we're free, and because it's America, we have a lot of options, no puns intended, okay? So what happens is, is so right now, let's just do, so on Friday, there's 13% short interest, right? Average short interest for any given stock on a market is around 12%. So let's just do a, the 33% of short volume just on Friday, okay? Let's do the quick math. So that's what, 46? So what's 23? So let's say 23% is shorted. If all 23% have to cover, what do you see? You see a 23% upside immediately, right? And this is not AMC, okay? This is not AMC. This is Torch. And because it's a Torch, it already become a new company. So these guys have to cover. The AMC covering, you're not sure yet, okay? We're actually not sure if the shorts are actually covering or anything for AMC. Because as the, the, the price goes up and up and up and up for AMC, there's more even more short potential. Even though the short the short floor, the short floor actually increased over time. Well, I, I will explain it if you guys are interested in, in talking about AMC and long-term prediction for AMC or whatever, right? I'm basically just day trading AMC right now. But anyways, so those guys have to cover. So then that means the upside is there. The upside is there. Like remember, the upside is there, okay? The upside is there. So what was the consensus? Like the 23%? Yeah, the upside is there so right now, right? 16%, you know, you have the 16% upside, 23% upside, 33% upside. You know, a lot of people are exaggerating, right? They're saying, oh my God, it's gonna close at $37 on the first day. Probably not gonna happen, okay? If you back trades all of the data from previous reverse splits that are not ETFs or shorting ETFs, usually on the first day of the reverse split, even though they're potential their company, it's not gonna go up that much, okay? Let's just say it opens at 10 or $12. I think 50% of most, so like around $18, like even 20, right? Like maybe at the end it's gonna be $20. But it really depending on if majority of, of the retail like players are holding or they're panicking, right? That's important because if the shorts if the shorts have a deal with their broker and they're saying we want to cover like a Monday night, like a Monday night, like you know right before like the bell rings, right? Right before the bell rings or right before like the you know on Monday is like twenty eighth, right right before the date meter go from twenty to twenty nine. So, so when you're covering, the price depends on the either the closing market price, the opening pre-market price, depending on what kind of deal they have, or the mid market price when like you know if they see a huge price dip and then they don't think this this company is shortable, they will probably cover there and then just like compensate it for this part, right? Um, so whether it's gonna get to twenty, it really depends on a, are we holding the holders? The diamond hands, B newcomers, right? If you see your volume spike, right? So if you so I think last Friday you're trading at point two billion volume, and if on Monday, because Monday is notoriously for huge option inflow, huge money flowing to the market, because a lot of people close their position on Friday, right? I have to stress it all the time. So let's just say you see a just say two billion, okay? Or like two billion is probably impossible. Let's just say uh like twenty uh, like two hundred million, okay? So that's somewhere around there, right? You see a two hundred million volume spike. It's gonna push the it's gonna push the intrinsic upside of the stock to a new high, okay? And what what really is gonna happen is what you really wanna see is actually Tuesday, like Monday. It's already set in stone, okay? People already made their mind of like whether you're gonna sell or you're just gonna hold, right? And sellers are panicking, or sellers would be like, you know, I'm gonna take a quick profit, right? Profit or panic? And holders are just believers, okay? There's always gonna be like 10% of us who are strong believers. And I, I love you guys, I love the strong believers. I want all the strong believers come to our channel because we give you facts and you can drive a lot of things from the facts and everything. But what is more important about Tuesday is if you backtrace all the data, right? All the data for reverse stock flips, 
Where the stocks what sorry I'm just looking if my mic is actually open <laughs> otherwise I would look this so much footage I'll be so pissed um you can actually see like there's actually a time decay or not decay more like a time delay for a huge upside for for BTX that's about two days right for other stocks it's one days to seven days okay and sometimes they see like a 50 percent increase or like a huge candle chart up to like 80 percent you never know right because mergers are anomalies okay like you have to understand is mergers are actually anomalies a they have to go through a lot of paperwork right so meta material doesn't require to really file their paperwork before but right now they're on the nasdaq so they have a higher standard of paperwork to have to file out they're more legislative there's more legislative more regulatory risk for them to to file and then one of the reasons why they're doing this is because they're they're trying to get money from the u.s market to to finance to finance their future operations and in those future operations you will see money 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 patents okay they have some they have some really good patents just just in their belly or on their belt okay they have really good patents and intellectual property is the most valuable commodity in the market maybe not the most let's scratch that more like a, a huge potential especially for like in the future nano nano components in in medicine and military is huge okay it is huge I think I've already spent like maybe 20 minutes talking about this, so I'm gonna stop now, okay? And please comment down below what are some questions, you know, are all your questions answered? If not, maybe I should make a QA, you know, video. If it is, like, you know, please smash that thumbs up button and like the video. We should beat the YouTube algorithm, get us more likes. Please sub, sub, sub if you love our channel, if you love, you know, all the news we're covering about Torch and other stocks. And in the future, we're gonna cover a lot more tickers. Um, I have I have a ATHA, I have a ATHA stock analysis video planned, okay. And I have a GMTX one planned too, and I also have a Gap one planned, planned because you know my one of my oldest subs actually want to know about Gap, uh, which is interesting. Okay, I have all those things planned. And please sub, sub, sub. If more people sub, you know, all of the educational content, all of the truth is going to come out. And there's going to be even more people in our community. And we're going to stay strong as a unit. And we stay strong as a unit. If the more support I have, the more confident I have, the more, you know, the more motivation I have, you guys are going to have more facts, more materials, more information, and more unique perception on the market. Because let's just be honest, a lot of YouTubers does not know what they're talking about, okay? And... And who knows what they're talking about, right? But anyways, disclaimer at the, the end too, we are not financial advisors. We do not, 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 we do not give financial advices. And everything we say on this channel is for shits and giggles only and for entertainment purposes only. And guess what, boys and girls, do's and do that. It's going to be a great Monday. And I will see you guys on the upside.